Roosters are a really important part of your flock. And I'm not saying everyone should have one. But if you wind up with one, I mean, they'll actually, a rooster will step in and separate scuffles and, and arguments and pecking between the hens sometimes as well. The one thing you don't ever want to do is if the rooster's having a scuffle with a hen, which as they're growing, juveniles, and be, until they become an adult and they work out their pecking order um, and the, the respect level, the rooster will sometimes aggravate the hens. And the hens get ballsy, and they should. They stand up for themselves. He wants a piece, and she doesn't want to give him any. And she's like, no, and I told you no means no. And she's like, rah, rah, and she'll peck him, and he'll run off. And that can happen anytime. If you have a squabble between a rooster and a hen, you can't ever, ever let the rooster hurt the hen. But if the hen is sticking up for herself, and she's being aggressive towards the rooster, and she's standing her ground, don't interfere. She needs to set her, her, her place in the pecking order as well. He cannot be an over-aggressor, and she, the hens cannot be stopped letting him know his place with them as well, what's acceptable and what's not. So again, don't interfere with a hen standing up to a rooster. Interfere immediately if a rooster shows aggression, aggression towards a hen. Now, if the rooster shows aggression towards you, um, BB did with me a couple of times. Uh, the one, don't fight your rooster. Even I made that mistake, not in like a full sense of the word, but I was like, BB would come running for me a couple of times. I'm like, oh, what, you want to fight? I'd like make a kicking. No, then all you're doing is confirming that you're a threat. And every time he sees you, he's going to want to fight. So you don't want to encourage it. You also don't want to punish the rooster for doing his job. So... You just need to teach him who he can attack and who he can't. So he's going to learn that he can't attack everyone that you may bring to your house. But he should be leery of them. And he should be allowed to be leery of the people that come to the house. It's his job. And he's, you're going to confuse him. And you don't want to punish him for doing what he's supposed to do. You want him to protect those girls from crows, hawks, um, eagles, foxes, fishers, raccoons. Raccoons are the deadliest animal to chickens. They kill them for sport. They will wipe out an entire flock in one night for no other reason than sport. They don't eat the meat. They might eat some of the eggs if there are eggs in there. Fishers are also awful. Foxes are terrible, but foxes kill because they're going to eat the meat. Raccoons kill for sport. So anyway, do not beat the shit out of your rooster either. That is not the answer because now the rooster is going to be afraid of you. It's abusive. And there's no reason for it. I found a couple of very effective ways that you can correct an aggressive rooster's behavior. And once he learns his place, they, they, they live by the pecking order rule. And that, that's, that's, a, that's a real thing. There's two perches who's on the top perch. They're higher in the pecking order. And they'll, they'll squabble with each other. And, and they're not fighting. It's just a quick peck or, or they they puff up their chest and they, you know, Chest bump each other. It's like guys in high school football do that to like, you know, instead of smacking each other's asses. They do it because they're establishing a hierarchy. You cannot abuse your rooster and then expect him to want to protect the flock. And don't do it just because you be an asshole if you are. I've heard of people that do it. Two effective ways that I've worked and I've done a bunch of them. Two effective ways to correct an aggressive rooster without hurting them and without giving them the wrong impression. The first one is a little more time consuming, but it's, it's very effective. Pick the rooster up. Now you got to catch him, but when you catch him, you want to hold him nice and snug, not tight there. You can hold them to the ground. I don't like that one. It's very effective. All you do is you hold the, you, you can, you catch a rooster, hold his wings so that he doesn't flap his wings. He doesn't hurt himself or fly away and you can lay him on his side. If you do, you just keep your hand under him and a hand over him, and you just sort of hold him in a laying position until he stops struggling, and that's submission. That should correct it. Um, that's not my favorite. It is, um, it is a very respected one, and there's really nothing wrong with it, but I found other ways that are a little less demeaning. Um, you can carry them around. Pick them up. There's not, it's a little emasculating, but it's not quite as demeaning as being held down to the ground. And you don't want to hold them down. Don't hurt them and make sure they can breathe and they're comfortable. You're just going to lay them down and hold them 
long enough that they stop fighting to let go. And when they do, they get it. Hold them a couple seconds longer. You say, okay, everything's good. Let them go. Take a step back. Let him look at you. You look at him. You don't just let him go and turn your back and walk away. There's a, there's a way to do it. And so the way I like to is either pick him up, tuck him under your arm. You make sure you have him snug enough that his wings don't flap. He's not going to hurt himself, hurt you, or fly away. Hold him with that one arm. He can't really peck you if he's going to peck you. And if he pecks you, you may have to lay him down. But if he, you just pretty much hold him. And you hold him with both hands. Stroke him. Pet him. Talk to him. But walk around with him for 15 minutes. They say 20. I don't have time for that. I do 10, 15 minutes. I'm walking around the yard picking up some trash. I'm holding the rooster while I'm doing it. It just drives him crazy. He's calm while you're holding him. He might get a little aggressive once in a while, puff up his feathers, but he stops. He knows he's being held. So it's a little emasculating. It means that you're showing your, your dominance and your level of hierarchy in the pecking order. You're bigger than him. Look, I'm going to carry you. And you carry him around while you do your, your yard chores for 15 minutes. By the time you put him down, he's calm, he's chill, he's, his heart's not racing, he's not breathing heavy, he's not very upset. Put him down, and he, he won't run. He'll just sort of like trot off. He'll, he might stop, turn back, and look at you like, yeah, you're a dick, I heard you. And you may have to do that once, or, usually once. <clears throat> if you have to do it again, it shouldn't be but every couple months, if more than once. But if, it, if they're overly aggressive, you may have to do that a couple of days in a row. Or if you see them um, being aggressive with the hens or with people that, you know, that they should know, that they should be comfortable with, that aren't mistreating them, <clears throat> you may have to do it more than once. We used to put BB in timeout once in a while. He would start to get a little aggressive with the hens. I'm like, nope, not having it. We put him in the garage for one night, sometimes two. As soon as they're missing from the flock, as soon as somebody's missing... Someone lower wants to move up. So the whole pecking order changes, which is why we hesitate to bring chickens in the house when they're sick. Because if they're sick and they have to be in the house for a long time, it's like starting all over again with the flock. They have to reacclimate. They have to get their place in the pecking order again. And if they're gone for a really long time, they don't, they're not remembered anymore. They, they probably they have to re-meet each other. Only the ones with the same breed seem to remember each other because they tend to stick together in, in their, own, their own flock. So... <clears throat> what worked best for me and BB was I just played like a couple of Jedi mind tricks on him. Remember when I was telling you that their eyes go out to the sides because they're prey animals? I found that getting down, I'll show you how I do it. I get down. If he starts running towards me, BB used to just once in a while do it. He pet TJ every day. Okay. As soon as I see BB coming at me, I immediately squat down and I start going like this. He comes up, he stops right here. And he's like, he doesn't know which way to go. So I'm like, what, you wanna fight? You wanna fight? What's the matter, baby? You wanna fight? And each time I move my hand, he's forced to turn his head because he can't see straight ahead. He can see from the sides. So I'm like, what's up, baby? What's the matter? And I just go like this to him. You do that three or four times. He's like, fuck, he's exhausted. And he gets, he walks away. I give up. I can't think of a simpler, least invasive, more effective way to tell your roosters, like, he doesn't even know you, that you dominated him. He just, he'd get confused, and he's like, this isn't worth it. I'm like, I don't know which hand to look at. And that was it. BB didn't ever attack me. I said, TJ, he'd go out in the morning, don't turn your back on him. And he'd come back, he had a little blood on the back of his ankle, I'm like, you turned your back. I'm like, tell him no. But we loved BB. BB was a phenomenal rooster, and he died for his hands. So we made exceptions for him. He wasn't aggressive towards other people. And he just didn't like TJ. So we would carry him around if he was aggressive. And worst case scenario, he would spend a night or two in the garage. Because when he was missing for a day or two, he's, the, the hens aren't the only ones that have to learn a new hierarchy in the pecking order. So does the rooster. Knocks him down a few pegs. You put him in a cage. We had like a dog crate. We put him in a big dog crate with food and water and some pine chips for a night or two. And he couldn't have his ladies. And they start reordering themselves in the pecking order within a day or two. All of a sudden, he shows up. He's not new, but he's like, I was in the doghouse. Literally. Those are the best ways to correct aggressive rooster behavior. But hopefully, if you understand them and why they're here and what they do, 
instead of looking at them as disposable or fighting with them or thinking that they're aggressive assholes, appreciate their purpose and how seriously they take their jobs and how much they love that block. They will die for them. People say that all the time. I would die for you. But when show me a situation where you actually have to and how many people would because a rooster would. And we've seen it. We've had several roosters that have died protecting our flock. So they're an interesting breed. They're unique. They're very regal. They're gorgeous. But they're important. They're not disposable. And if you understand that that's how they were bred, they know no differently. Protect. That's their job. So I hope you guys found that one interesting, maybe a little better than talking about sick, dying chickens. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And um, if you want to hit the like button or subscribe, we would love that too. Thanks so much. Have a great day.